It's classy and crude, clever and confusing. It must be Monty Python. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberry. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Monty Python movie moments. Yes, gangs of old ladies attacking fit, defenseless young men. For this list, we're only including the film moments that make us fall on our incontinentia buttocks the most. So, sorry to you Spamalot fans out there. We've got a way! Number 10. Witch Accusation. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We have found the witch, may we burn her? Burn her! Burn her! On his quest to gather a band of brave knights to join him at his court at Camelot, Arthur, King of the Britons, encounters a makeshift trial where a woman is being accused of witchcraft. Their evidence? Well, she turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. And their justice system? If she weighs the same as a duck, she's made of wood. And therefore... A witch! A witch! So, what's the result? A witch! A witch! Is it fair, Cop? Nah, it was a simpler time. Number 9. Mr. Creosote, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Oh, shit! It's Mr. Creosote! Quite possibly the most disgusting thing in Monty Python, and that's including all the over-the-top gore, is the obese and vomit-inducing fine dining guest. Or would he prefer to order straight away? Uh, today we have four appetizers. Excuse me. Emphasis on the vomit-inducing. Another bucket for Monsieur. And perhaps a hose. Honestly, this scene just speaks for itself. The morbidly obese Mr. Creosote coats practically everything in vomit, waiters and cleaning ladies included. And the cleaning woman. And just when you think it can't get any more disgusting, this happens. Nice. Number eight. Public stoning, Monty Python's Life of Brian. You are to be stoned to death. Life in the era of Christ could get a little boring. That's why a public stoning was pretty much the equivalent of the World Cup. Now look, no one is to stone anyone until I blow this whistle. But turns out people were a tad strict on what qualified as a reason for a rocky death. Look. I don't think it ought to be blasphemy. Just saying Jehovah. Oh, are you making it worse for yourself? Making it worse? How could it be worse? Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Man, with violence like that, this sure ain't a place for a lady. But is it just us, or do some of the bearded gents have lovely skin? Are there any women here today? At any rate, just remember the first rule of public stonings, anyone is fair game. Even if they do say Jehovah! <laughs> Number 7. Biggest Dickus, Monty Python's Life of Brian. I think it's a joke, sir. Like, uh, Silly Osonis or Biggest Dickus, sir. Nothing beats a penis joke. And even the Roman centurions with their hardened discipline are powerless against them. I have a very great friend in Rome called Biggest Dickus. <laughs> In this scene, Brian has been captured and taken before Pilate. But during questioning, there is a bit of confusion regarding a certain character and his unfortunate name. Will I say the name? Dickus? Dickus? Remember kids, when discussing VIPs, never burst out laughing, even if their name is... Incontinentia. Incontinentia buttocks. Shut up! What's this? Number six. Bring out your dead, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Bring out your dead! The plague is nothing to be sniffed at. After all, disease has killed millions over the centuries. So why does the scene have us laughing our asses off? I'm not dead! Yeah. 
He says he's not dead. Yes, he is. I'm not. He isn't? Well, he will be soon. He's very ill. I'm getting better. No, you're not. You'll be stone dead in a moment. One of the funniest moments from the opening of the film, it makes us wonder how many of ye old England's peasants were taken out like this. Isn't there something you can do? I feel happy. I feel happy. Ah, oh, thanks very much. Not at all. See you on Thursday. Right. right. Number five, The Bridge of Death, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There it is. The Bridge of Death. Facing their final challenge before finding the Grail, Arthur and his knights encounter an ancient bridge and its crooked guardian. Who approaches the Bridge of Death must answer me these questions three. Uh, the other side he see. To pass, they each must answer some questions. What is your favorite color? Blue. Right, off you go. Oh, thank you. Some do well. Others, not so much. What is the capital of Assyria? I don't know that! <laughs> but in the end, Arthur pulls through with what is quite possibly the weirdest joke setup ever. What do you mean? African or European swallow? Huh? I, I don't know that. <laughs> Who do you know so much about swallows? Well, you have to know these things when you're a king, you know. Number four, The Bright Side of Life, Monty Python's Life of Brian. Always look on the bright side of life. This has got to be one of the most quoted and loved parts of the Python's entire catalog. Blaspheming as always, the cast turns the quintessential Christian moment into one hell of a catchy tune. Forget about your scene, give the audience a grin. Enjoy it, it's your last chance anyhow. After you're done scratching your head as to why men nailed to wooden crosses are having a merry whistle, you'll find yourself joining in. There's no helping it, this scene and song are timeless. Always look on the bright side of life. Number three, Sex Ed, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Sex, sex, sex. Where were we? Sexual education can be boring and uncomfortable at the best of times. Consider yourself lucky you weren't in this class. Name two ways of getting them flowing, Watson. Rubbing the clitoris up. What's wrong with a kiss boy? In this scene, John Cleese demonstrates the standard form and positioning of sex with a practical demonstration. The man now starts making thrusting movements with his pelvic area, moving the penis up and down inside the vagina. So put it there, boy, put it there on the table. You have to give credit to this teacher, though. Even when boning his wife, he'll still maintain discipline in his class. Now, as the sexual excitement mounts, what's funny, Biggs? Oh, nothing, sir. Oh, do please share your little joke with the rest of us. I mean, obviously, something frightfully funny is going on. Number two, the holy hand grenade and the killer bunny. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. For the entrance to this cave is guarded by a creature so foul, so cruel, that no man yet has fought with it and lived. These two are just gems, and they happen in the same scene, so we thought we'd throw them in together. Right. Keep me covered. What with? Just keep me covered. Arthur and his crew are closing in on the grail, but are stopped in their tracks by a fearsome creature. There he is! What, behind the rabbit? It is the rabbit. Skeptical at first, Arthur sends in one of his knights to take care of it. How does that turn out? Look! Ah! Jesus Christ! I warned you! How to deal with such a menace? Blow the hell out of it, of course. And no weapon is more suited for the task than the holy hand grenade of Antioch. Three. Toasty. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. This bloke won't haggle. Won't haggle? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 well, this is nothing to worry about. Now, this is what they did. He's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy. I've got no option but to sell you all for scientific experiments. Help, help, I'm being repressed. I wish I'd been a girly. 
just like my dear papa. You must cut down the mightiest tree in the forest with a herring. <laughs> Number one, The Black Knight's Flesh Wound, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. None shall pass. What? None shall pass. Could it be anything else? He's the iconic character that can't be slain by any man, but he sure as hell can get dismembered. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Arthur, on his way to recruit his knights, encounters a deadly warrior clad in black. When the king's proposition to join his group is declined, the two engage in a fearsome fight, leading to a whole lot of limbs getting sliced. Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Look, it's just a flesh wound. After some big talk and bigger sword swings, the immortal knight is left in a rather awkward position. All right, we call it a draw. Did you enjoy our list? What's your favorite Monty Python movie moment? <laughs> Be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com for more of your favorite top tens published daily. And now for something completely different. Thank <laughs> you.